I have to ask you guys to forgive my nervousness, but um, public speaking is probably my second least favorite thing to do on the planet. And it's, it's, it's kind of ironic because I've given three speeches in my life. And all three people are in the room tonight. Uh, Brandon Phillips, I was his best man at his wedding, and I gave a speech. And honestly, without Brandon, I wouldn't have my team. And I think we all know that I won't need my jersey that I received last night for 362 days, so I'm going to let Brandon borrow that. <laughs> and then, then we have Seth, and I was Seth's best man at his wedding. I wasn't invited to the wedding with him and Evelyn, so I, uh, I'm not really sure about, about that wedding, but um, yeah, I wasn't invited to that one. But, um, and the, uh, the third speech I ever gave in my life was at the, uh, the celebration of life for Kristen Martinez, and that was, that was an awesome event. So when Jenna comes up to you and asks you to do a speech when she knows this is what you hate, you, you, you can't really say no to her. And uh, it was kind of the same way four years ago when Kristen asked me to do this little bike ride. So I'm not sure how many of you had the honor and the pleasure of knowing Kristen, but uh, she was an amazing woman. And uh, I couldn't say no to her at work after working a 60-hour work week when she was wearing jeans and had paint in her hair and was dirty. So I definitely couldn't say to her, no to her that night at one of the YC events, and yeah, the drinks were flowing, and it was a little run. So it wasn't until three days later when the pink drinks wore off that I realized what a little ride was. <laughs> 230 miles uphill, <laughs> breathing in cow manure, <laughs> and wearing spandex with no underwear on. <laughs> really? But the main point of my little talk tonight is there's always a million reasons not to ride. So year one, and again, it was probably because I was drinking, um, I commit to Kristen to do a little ride. And then I realize, wow, I also have this event in DC. It's my corporate event, the one that pays me, and this and the other. So, oh yeah, and my, one of my buddies is in its final stages of Lou Gehrig. But when you make a commitment, you stick to it. So on Monday, I go to DC, I fly back to New York, I go to a wake on Tuesday night, go to a funeral Wednesday morning, I drive to DC and back to DC Wednesday after the funeral. Thursday, I hang out in DC, then I drive to Hershey Park Thursday night, Friday I ride, Saturday I ride. Then I get my sister, my amazing sister, she picks me up, drives back to DC to finish the event, then we get back to Hershey Park or wherever we were at that point in the middle of the 230 miles and we finished the ride. No sleep, nothing, but it was amazing. And I'll never forget, I was talking to Kristen in the city, we were crying, she's crying, thank you for riding. And I'm like, well, no, thank you for introducing me to 250 of the most amazing people in the world. And she's like, how was it? I was like, it was great. I was like, I showed up alone. And then I never felt like I was alone, alone. It was an absolutely amazing event. She's like, okay, well, I'll do it with you next year. I'm like, well, you can ride my bike because I'm never doing this again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, and then after two months, after your butt and other body parts forgive you, you're like, all right, I can do this. I, I, I can totally do this. I call my best friend, Brandon. I'm like, Brandon, we're doing this. We're going to do this ride. We're going to train, guys. We, we're really going to train this year. This year we train. This year we train. But then... But then real life stuff happens, you know, and we lost Kristen. And I know there's not a person in this room that can't relate to losing someone at the age of 35, at a young age, and it just rips a hole in your heart, and you're like, how do I do this? How do I ride? And, but you made a commitment. And then real life happens. I get in a car accident with my amazing girlfriend, Camille, and we're on the Verrazano Bridge, and a car hits us, and we're in a six-car pileup double airbag deployment. I take my seatbelt off to check on Camille, another car hits us, my head hits the windshield, crack the windshield. Plenty of reasons not to ride. The doctor said, don't ride. Camille said, don't ride. My mother said, don't ride. My lawyer's like, please, please don't ride. You know? But you know what? I made a commitment to Kristen, 
I made a commitment to myself, and I made a commitment to all the people that took care of me on my first year. So year, year two, ride one. Of course, everyone tells you it's 70 miles. Okay, so we're, we're, we're at mile 75. And we're at a church, which is ironic because I'm dropping a lot of F-bombs. Brandon, Brandon's like, you can do this. Evan's like, you can do this. Uh, and they're like, what about Kristen? I was like, F Kristen, F you, F everybody. I am not riding anymore. I turn around and this lady's like, I am the mom. I'm, I'm going to do it. You can do it too. It's my first ride. Mary Jo French. Rest in peace. We lost her this year. I can do it. You can do it too. So I cry my way through the next 15 miles. I have a nervous breakdown at the end of the ride. Amazing though. And Mary Jo French, we love you and we miss you. This is why we ride. There's so many reasons to ride and so many reasons not to, but at least the reasons we ride outweigh the reasons we don't. I think I had a little rain waiting in a safe in the hotel in the city, which kind of pushed me through the ride as well from my amazing girlfriend who became my amazing fiance. And then we come to year three, which is this year. You're going to find this shocking, but I didn't train. So, you have real life events, but guess what? Cancer is a real life event. It doesn't wait for your weekends. It doesn't wait for your summer vacation. It doesn't wait till you had a kid. Cancer comes, it kicks you in the butt, and we fight it. That's what we do, you know what I mean? So this year, my amazing fiance became my amazing wife on January 1st. <laughs> and then real life happens. Unfortunately, because of the recession we're in, she has to go back to Houston for work. So I'm on a plane more than I'm on a bike. Plenty of reasons not to ride, but a lot more reasons to ride. A reason like Jamie, an amazing woman who gave an amazing speech. I think I'm still crying from last year. You know what I mean? Amazing woman, really foul mouth. Absolutely foul mouth. So I want to thank my team. An amazing team, an amazing group of guys. And we raised $25,000. A very big number, but that's not what I'm the most proud of. I'm proud of the fact that these guys know what this is about. They know this organization, they know what it's about. And the proudest moment I've had in the last three years was when Brandon's daughter said she wanted to cut her hair. Brandon's gorgeous, sexy little man over there, we all know that. So of course he has a beautiful daughter, seven years old, and she said, I want to cut my hair off and give it to Locks of Love because I want to help cancer people like my daddy. And that is what this ride is about. I want to talk a little more about my amazing wife. And I want to talk about the people in the room who don't ride. I want to talk about the wives that don't ride. I want to talk about Rich's daughter, whose 15th birthday is yesterday, and the sacrifices that the people who do not ride make. You guys are all amazing. You guys should all stand up, and you guys should all clap for yourself. Just because you're not sitting on that little plastic seat for 230 miles doesn't mean you're not the most amazing people in the world. You guys are great. Don't worry, I'm going to sit down soon. I want to give a shout out to the ladies in the sag wagon today. I felt an obligation to ride with you, so you were okay. <laughs> I'm going to make sure you get the driver in seating, rude and appropriate. So. I definitely want to give a shout out to Mitchell. Every guy, everyone in the room knows who Mitchell is. He is the youngest person in the room. Mitchell was Papa Bear today. He brought six of us home because we would not be speaking right now. We'd still be looking for us. But Mitchell brought us home. He was an amazing man. And uh, Kristen Martinez. Kristen told me four things in life. She goes, I'm going to bring you an amazing wife. Well, she did it. She also said, make your mark inspire change, and leave your legacy. Well, I'm here to tell everyone in this entire room, I 
that Kristen Martinez, she left her mark, she inspired change, and she left her legacy in me, and my wife, and my team, and everyone in this room, and that is why we ride.